It's part two of my guitar build, and you're not going to want to miss it, so don't go away. Hello everyone and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And today is part two of my guitar build. This is going to be a lot of fun. We're really finally starting to get into it. Part one, as you may remember, was just the unboxing and first look at the kit. And now we're really going to get into things. So let's get busy. So we are finally ready to start the Fretwire Les Paul style guitar kit build. I'll admit, I'm both excited and pensive. Fear of the unknown and all of that stuff. I really did a lot of pre-planning and I decided for my build, I'm going to glue the neck to the body before applying color. So I have some preliminary stuff to tend to now based on that decision. First, I'm going to shape the headstock of the guitar. You certainly can leave it as it comes, but I have a subtle design feature I'm going to add. The top of the F in my Fat Guy logo has a kind of a swoop to it, and I'm going to put that swoop into the top of my guitar. I'll start by drawing out the shape freehand, and then I'll clean it up with a French curve. Once happy, I'll run it over to my bandsaw and cut the shape out. Now that I've cut out the majority of the wood, I can bring it over to my spindle sander and then finish sand it with the rest of the guitar. For the back of the guitar and the neck, I'll sand everything down with 320 grit sandpaper then I'll hit it a second time with 400. Honestly, everything was pretty smooth right out of the box, but I just wanted to give it a final pass. When I get to the maple front, I'll only use 400 grit sandpaper. The face is a thin veneer, and I have heard a ton of horror stories about guys sanding through the top, and honestly, I was super paranoid about that happening to me. Light sanding, 400 grit only, for this kid, that's the way. Take some time while doing the sanding to look for residual glue. Glue will really bite you in the rear end when it comes to applying the finish. So before gluing the neck in, I want to tape off the wood around it to contain squeeze out of the glue and keep sanding to a minimum. 
I'll set the neck in and I'll start to tape it all off. Then I'll take the neck out and put it aside for the time being. I'm using Gorilla Brand wood glue here because it's strong as hell and the last thing I need is to have this thing come apart down the road. So I'll apply a thin layer of glue to all the mating surfaces. First in the body, then on the neck, and then I'll press it all together. As expected, I get squeeze out, but my masking job saves the day. I'll clean off all the squeeze out with a damp rag, then I'll remove the tape. I'm padding the frets with a soft cloth and some wood and then I'll clamp the neck down and I'll leave the whole thing to dry for about 24 hours. The next day rolls around and I can finally remove the clamps and pray I did this right. Boom! It actually looks like a guitar. I've decided to spray my finish on, so I bought two color tone sets. One for the front 
to give me a sunburst finish and one for the back to give me a tobacco brown finish. I'll start by sealing the wood grain which will give me a smoother end product. The color tone kits I bought came with the grain filler. So to start, I'll wipe off all the dust from the guitar using a tack cloth and then I'll mix up the grain filler. Just mix it with water to the consistency of like sour cream and then brush it on with the grain. Once you've got the grain filler on, I'll use a plastic scraper to scrape the filler and force it down into the wood grain. This also removes the excess in one pass. I'll repeat the entire filler process on the back, side, neck, and headstock. Once I'm done applying the filler, I'll leave this to dry for several hours. You'll see the difference in it when it's dry. It gets very chalky looking. Once totally dry, I'll sand everything with 400 grit sandpaper. The goal here is to remove all of the sealer on the wood surface, only leaving behind the sealer that's now filling the wood grain. Again, be super careful here. Do not sand through the veneer front. So far so good. It's going well now and I can just wait for some warmer days to start adding color. So I have a beautiful day in Vegas with temperatures in the, around the 70s. I have the color tone vintage amber soaking in a sink of hot water to make sure it will spray nicely. I'm really ready to go. I've rigged a hanger in my garage. I have my dusk mask at the ready. I've prepped the guitar by masking off the neck, and now I'm cleaning off the body with a tack cloth to make sure I don't have any residual sanding dust to mess up my finish. Four important tips here. Make sure the guitar is clean. Make sure it's warm out. Make sure to warm the spray can. And finally, Shake the living hell out of that can. So, why am I using spray instead of a wipe on or a stain or something like that? First, I think it will give a better sunburst. But also, I think it'll be easier. I also imagine it will keep the color even should I hit a bit of glue. Whereas if you're using wipe on, it won't cover the glue spot and it'll stand out like a turd in a punch bowl. So, for me, spray was an easy choice. I'll lay down about three coats of the vintage amber to get the tone I want. And I want my guitar to have a bright, colorful sunburst. I'll vary the direction I apply the color in, side to side, top to bottom, 45 degree angle. This will help give you an even finish. Just remember, don't go too heavy.
this stuff will run. Ask me how I know. I let each coat dry for several hours before applying another. Once the amber is how I want it, I can apply the cherry red. I'll hold the can about 10 inches from the guitar and I'll spray in the single smoothest motion I can. A sunburst doesn't follow the entire shape of the guitar. It is actually a teardrop shape and only follows the edge of the lower part of the body. The tip of the teardrop comes together at the neck. Again, apply light coats in a smooth motion. We won't be doing any sanding yet because it can make your finish look splotchy. What a fun project. I think I'm off to a great start and I'm feeling great about the way it's going. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you come back for part three when I'll complete the finish, do the wet sanding, and polish the entire guitar out. It should be a lot of fun and super informative. If you like this video, please give it a giant thumbs up, click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss the rest of this build. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please leave them down below. So, that's it for part two. In life, always say yes to new experiences. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying be good.